थ्री टू वन गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबडी एंड वेलकम टू सेकंड सेशन ऑफ द डे इन द मॉर्निंग वी हैड एक्सेलेंट सेशन बाय मिस्टर हसीन उल सनू थैंक यू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर योर वेरी गुड रिस्पांस टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन मिस्टर मिस्टर हसीन उल फोकस इन द मॉर्निंग सेशन ऑन साइबर सिक्योरिटी एंड द अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन दिस डोमेन ही आल्सो डिस्कस द रिसेंट कोरोना वायरस पेंडेमिक बेस्ड साइबर अटैक वेयर साइबर क्रूकर्स आर यूजिंग covid 19 situation in 2020 to defraud people through phishing and ransomware in india and in the world uh he has very well explained about pen testing which is a simulated cyber attack against your computer system to check for exploitable vulnerabilities in this session uh, he will cover cyber security threats and how to protect from it without wasting much of time and now i request mr hasinul sanu to start his session over to mr sanuel sorry uh, over to mr hasinul sorry hi <coughs> all am i audible to all yes sir yes. okay and uh, now the second sections are related to the cyber security threats in all, uh, in major areas in our daily life activity from starting from our daily life activities to uh, the ex- to the unexpected items is where the cyber security attacks can take pl- taken places and uh, yeah okay so we move on okay this is what we have discussed earlier uh, if any one of new uh, into the sessions so uh, the threats might have an interesting part here like 5 million data records is stolen every day or 3.86 million average data breach costs okay and more than that just remember one thing 50 billion devices connected by 2020 so uh, it doesn't say that which type of devices it is maybe it's a audio speaker nowadays is every everyday speaker may have a connectivity with the uh, internet or any kind of things can connect into the internet so this number is just an exceptional it can be varies it uh some of the consultancy agencies they might have think this kind of this might this might value have been connected by to those money so if those devices are connected uh we can also have more security threats on those devices it's uh it's not differentiate whether these devices are uh like uh, household devices or personal devices or any kind of devices okay and uh, last time I, i have said i will follow the sessions through uh, from the recent attacks to uh, learning methodologies uh, i think i have shared on the learning methodologies before but i will also give a hint on learning methodologies again so you can uh, full you can do a follow up on this regarding so i am mainly concentrating on the threats that does happens in our country or in our surroundings or in our daily lives uh, the devices we encode uh, morely influence the threats associated with the devices okay okay so maybe uh, with uh, with uh, within a one week or two week before it's this happens around may 30 i think it's just reported some guy from india he his name is bauk chain he has pointed out a critical uh, bug in apple the famous uh, company so he has earned up to a, a dollar around 10 it's 1 million i think 1 million or 1 lakh whatever so uh, it is to be around 77 or 75 or 76 lakhs of indian rupee for a one big big uh, amount of money for a single uh, issue but this issue is a very critical issue that's why apple itself has given this much of amount of money 
So, and another, so this is kind of information that I want to give you out how the companies are uh, giving out the paychecks if they have, if you have you any uh, researcher like you or if you are uh, upcoming researchers like you or mine. So they, if they are input their values, input their patients, input their time on searching out the issues or bugging for me, they could able us to get this much of amount of money or more than that. But other than that, so we should have to enforce here those who might have used iOS devices. They might have seen this sign with Apple IDs. So uh, with using, uh, he has uh, bypassed those uh, Apple has known for its security, uh, more secure than uh, uh, other counterparts like Android or other parts. So uh, the impact of this one is the consumer industries. So an, an hacker might be he have found out this issue since he's a, a legitimate ethical hacker. He mailed this issue, he respond this issue uh, to the team with Apple and they might fix these issues. Think of it, how many, how many of the other hackers, they might have found this and they never told to the industry or they were not told to the particular people. So, you know, this is one of the bug that has discovered it. So there's a lot of bugs related to similar like these things uh, are exposing over the internet. So those, this type of bugs will be called the zero days. It's a new thing that they have published. So uh, many governments, many other terrorist groups or whatever, they do have this kind of, uh, they do might have these understandings of these bugs, but they may not disclose these bugs to any other, uh, to the respective teams or respective companies. So another one, you may have uh, encountered that Indian DigiLocker Digi account is uh, can be accessed without a password. So what is an Indian DigiLocker account? Around 3.5 billion uh, documents are stored in these government authorized applications. It's all about our sensitive data. So one guy is from Kerala, is one of my friend. Mohesh Mohan, he discovered this issue. He is uh, uh, they, without OTP, which OTP of an another user, you can able to access into the application. You can access other personal data. So this is, there is very great uh, findings and uh, this is some of the findings that Indian search team has acknowledged. And uh, this kind of is a great issue. So, uh, from what we have understand these things, the threats are near to us. The threats are in front of our application, in front of our fingertips. So, uh, hackers, uh, allied persons or allied ethical hacker like Mohesh Mohan may have uh, disclosed this issue to the government of India, or maybe an attacker, he might not. So, you have to think like that. How many of these issues are floating over the internet or in front of our eyes or in front of our fingerprint fingertips they might be the ap application that we have used may have some kind of issues so this is one of the great finding and also that this is one of the recent finding around one or two weeks before and it was uh, it was sorted out by this way and one of our, one of the thing that WhatsApp was uh, utilized for a spy tool. The, the real WhatsApp that we are use are be using as uh, use. WhatsApp was says that Indian journalist and activist was paid on using Israel spyware. So these spyware uh, can be used instead of WhatsApp. So uh, how the researchers, the bad or allied or black hat researchers found out this issue, they created some kind of spyware instead of WhatsApp. They have found out some bug in the WhatsApp and they, they used this spy uh, bug 
to spying on different persons, spying on anybody, anybody uses on the WhatsApp. So uh, these, these things is a great surveillance activities. So this, uh, uh, you know, so these zero days is the attackers can use this kind of information to sp for any other purposes. Here they are used for spying the best Indian politicians or activists who are Indian or any other person. Maybe you and me, maybe this talk can be uh, maybe uh, will spied. I don't know, it doesn't have much importance on them, but literally they can spy anybody. So uh, this is one of the last a uh, few months back old reports related to WhatsApp and uh, the devices. See here, the Facebook, the one of uh, WhatsApp users, they do find out an Israeli and as a spy firm uh, for hacking WhatsApp users. So uh, somehow Facebook is able to find out this issue. Uh, so then only they could know uh, these threats from uh, these countries or uh, it's not from a government, I think it's not, it's some private companies, they use these threats to hacking people and they sell this and sell this particular vulnerability or payload for any international terrorist groups or any governments who are interested to surveillance their people. Okay, we have to worry about it. And uh, uh, we were mentioning in the first session that uh, some rogue Android app has camera access without permission. Um, um, I'm really imposing of all of you, including myself, whenever we go through a, when we go through uh, installing a particular application, either it is to be a camera filter application or it is to be a, some kind of, you know, uh, gaming applications, we have this to, uh, go through the, like that, we should have this to find, uh, check what are the permissions this particular app requires. Maybe I uh, was mentioned before, like even a diary, simple diary app or a calculator app uh, does require the permission of a microphone. Why the hell they require these things, these permissions? So you have to better care about the application that you are installed in your mobile phones. So uh, this may sometimes uh, sometimes may have the camera access and without our knowledge, without the user victim knowledge, the camera uh, and any, any attacker from other world, can, from any other part can own the cameras, can work the cameras, like they can do that. Uh, they can start our cameras without uh, their, uh, and it it's UI, whatever the camera UI will not be visible to us. Someone can visible, someone can visible our private movements. Everything can be done using these things. And one of the important thing, most of our Android phones just uses the Qualcomm chips. So uh, Qualcomm chips has some flaws that recently uh, some of the researchers have found out and hackers can steal the private data from Android devices. Nowadays, we Android devices just use its own encryption techniques. That's, uh, they do have a certain kind of hardware in the chips that does have some encryption, that does have some encryption capabilities of your passwords, your encryption keys. So these areas, these trusted platform areas, that can be stealed from some of the Qualcomm, some, uh, some variant of the Qualcomm chips, this was discovered. So uh, we, we will also think about it, how, how we, on what sectors, on which areas the attackers or attack does happens. Before that, we do see the Android application. Here in Qualcomm chips, it's, we able to see, we able to understand that the attack can be happen inside a hardware. You got it. Instead of hardware, the attack could be happens. So inside the chip, it could be happens. So we don't know exactly how the things are working out, but researchers are very keen, interesting on these things, and they do a lot of research and working out how we can, you know, then only 
somehow then only they can prevent they understand this this type of attacks this happens otherwise uh, i i will repeat i will repeat if somehow any person who have a bad intention bad intention does have knowledge of this type of attacks we would never know that at this point of time we would never know that this type of attacks be happen or not so even how many we don't know how many of our phones is get hacked even at this point of times is or maybe something some bad go might be there in our phones so many of our india is a big uh, usage of android phones and most of the uh, one of the be uh, best used and the top used in the in internet so we have we and we have a poor privacy programs in our uh, in our in our countries okay so i was saying about the ransomware previous sessions and uh, and another one another thing i have is to pointing out the healthcare security maybe uh, many of us uh, many many of us never cared about of this healthcare security so one thing we have to uh, we have to share that whatever when we go for the hospitals for checking up for scanning up those details or these images they, they might these medical officers or medic uh, or the hospitals may have storing these devices for their future references so somehow the hospital does have an infrastructure they have a separate protocol and they might have opened this protocol into internet so anybody in the internet can access our private data sets like uh, like what what type of um, you know what uh, what type of issues that we are facing what type of medical issue that a person does have i have seen uh, that uh, some kind of uh, uh, i am unable to share that report here because of some issues so uh, uh, the, it, it does have uh, some some organ some hospitals details around of their employees even the scan reports it would it is uh, it is easily available in the internet but just typing but just connecting to that particular link they have open it up in the internet so uh, it, it is happens because uh, the uh, they may have misconfigured their uh, this kind of healthcare infrastructure in their uh, in the in the organizations that's why they somehow uh, an attacker can able to find out and use that informations for further social engineering or attacks or any kind of attacks that may be vulnerable to the victim and none other than the nuclear these kinds of uh, very issued uh, pro, uh, sensitive uh, target areas uh, it it is very hard, it is very uh, cautious on these things because uh, but more, uh, but we have uh, the hackers can't able to getting to the nuclear power plant inside any core or components of nuclear power plant that does happens the last time but but the issue was they were able to uh they were able to get uh, they were able to target they were able this was successfully targeted and successfully go, got get into it but not into the core areas of a nuclear power plant but this is something is worry worries about us so what is we have uh, i will share one of the incident that's happened in a middle east so it, it might be happens in every world but it is not uh, we don't know exactly Uh, because companies uh, or countries or companies won't disclose these things because of their disclosing problems so this is somehow some researchers have found out that attackers might have uh, get into these power plants uh, or they do have some traces of attackers uh, so that's it so uh, this is the one i do want to talk regarding uh, the critical infrastructure how the cyber security threats have effects on the critical infrastructure like an oil rigs or like uh, nuclear power plants or electrical grids like a uh, large electrical grids so uh, these things and uh, i will share how uh, the saudi armaco so the armaco one of the joint uh, initiative by the saudi government and american Uh, American private sector. I don't know private uh, government, semi-government, and they do have 
around 60 more than 60 or 70 percentage of total supply of oil in the world this particular company so they drilled out most of the oil in the end of world and they sell it oil to us is the petrol and diesel whatever the ones uh, so this company is one of the perfect one so somehow somehow this does happens in 2012 these attacks some of the technicians some of the technician maybe is an uh, is a small scale technician inside the company he got in scam mail he just clicked on a bad link like we we usually get our links in messages mostly we do get the some of the kind some of the links in our phones through messages or through emails that this has some scam mostly we don't do that but somehow this guy this poor guy has got clicked on that bad link and what actually the bad link does is somehow some malware injected into the his computer or wherever the workstation he has he uh, he clicked on the he used it to uh, clicked on that bad links and you know suddenly the malware action malware uh, uh, works out and um, the disappearing files and 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 it does some problems so what they have to uh, to survive this issue the end air facility have to shut down the computers do you think about it 35000 computers have to be shut out have need to be partially wiped or should be totally destroyed in spite of a uh, in the fear of a malware they have somehow a poor guy has clicked it so think about it apparently apparently the company temporarily stopped oil selling to domestic gas tank uh, to the areas <laughs> and think about it this was happened in 2012 where the technology has mostly uh, in the appraiser everybody uses the computers and uh, uh, this type of devices in their activities uh, organization activities and think about it this is a giant in the oil field this is the one who supplied oil to the uh, all the governments is all to the areas in the world and after 17 days after only 17 days they sh they have giving oils so think about how much oil has to be lost at that time so maybe uh, it's not lost but i think excess will be there right they uh, usually they drilled out these type of oils and only after 70 days is they have they might have to sell this oil to the uh, other countries so uh, they uh, within that day says they are giving the oil to uh, free to everyone in the Saudi Arabia to uh, to keep that flow. So how this uh, I uh, what I have understand is a trillion loss, trillion dollar losses to that company because of a simple bad link on an email. Okay. And uh, the other things that we have will be. Uh, you know, uh, we'll be founding out of that. Uh, we have known that crypto mining, data mining, we heard about of this. Somehow attackers, uh, we can't able to see somehow we may have feel that our computer gets somehow, you know, uh, they're not performing well uh, in the last time itself. They are stacking something. It's not performing, uh, uh, its performance is somehow we may have think about that about newly computers after some kind of works or some kind of uh, after one year or two year might be this happens in newly computers also it somehow becomes um, very stuck at times or it's not operative its processing speed is very low but think about it it might happen because the com uh, attacker turn your computer into a money making tool it's a crypto jacking that is be called a crypto jacking or a crypto miner you don't know we, we don't know whether it is to be a, uh, how it had happens so this is also very dangerous because uh, they use our own devices to their own benefit and we might not know there so these kind of threats are uh, are real it's not a drama it's not been seen in the movie these are these are happening everywhere and recently the iot devices something like that we do have the smart locks or smart whatever the smart uh, synonym and behind those are iot devices right so the smart doorbell somehow able to unlocks 
to the unauthorized person attacker. So he has some half techniques, maybe it has some Bluetooth hacking or some kind of Wi-Fi hacking using that technology, using that knowledge and infiltrator can able to get into the your homes. If your homes are uh, homes installed smart doorbell, smart video cameras inside the doorbell, it, these doorbells just have everything. So, and uh, uh, let's run other than the medical records that we have said before, these are exposed in uh, in this country, Commonwealth countries like Australia. Thinking about our situation, how we are secure our medical records in our countries. Another another area. Uh, so I was talking about uh, really in uh, mostly the hardware hardware part here and the uh, the threats that this comes into the hardware the threats that comes into your IoT devices, the threats that come to you on your personal medical records. So uh, I'm briefly explaining, maybe some of you may have heard about of these issues. And, uh, you know, somehow uh, a leaked compounds. Many of the, uh, you, uh, we all know that many of our chips are developed and created in, created from China. So what they have used, they might have injected some kind of hardware that is not necessary for that devices. We don't know exactly, right? So we are not the creators. We just bought our laptops or our phones or any other devices, all made from China. And even they positioned a somehow a, a hardware injector, somehow a hardware, a small chip, that may have that may the size of a rice grain. So we don't know what is this particular device, what is this particular components. You can see from the picture itself. So somehow researchers have found out that after only some, uh, after only someone uh, discovered these things, how many devices in the end of the world may have this uh, hardware injected thing from the developers itself, from the creator itself. So this just happens in the super micro servers that uh, used by, uh, I think Amazon, Apple, they use these super micro servers. So they do have an hardware injector and uh, somehow components that intentionally put there to uh, spy on your work. That does have a connection, frequently connected to, the, the, uh, to attacker servers in China. So these kinds of information, these kinds of uh, things are there. These kinds of threats are there. So we be using all kinds of our electronics from uh, China, especially. So we do have this. We don't know how many of our phones may have this kind of injected hardware, small look like hardware. We don't know that. We don't know that. We only know once we once we these researchers has exposed these kinds of attacks could happen. And we are realize how how far these things are going away, how far these securities are there. So that's it. On you can also check it down yourself. This regarding and another, you know, um, this is some kind of wave that uh, there's a lot of different ways an attacker can do uh, get the secrets. It's not maybe from phone. It might have from your uh, from your hardware. So this is from Intel chip secrets. So it does may have contains the uh, especially crypto hardware is used for uh, used for certain kind of encryption. Uh, so these kinds of device encryption they might have stored in these kinds of hardware, and hackers can use can use them uh, voltages level to higher or lower levels to analyze uh, these kinds of issues. Uh, there are a lot of ways we can't expect. There are a lot of ways an attacker can put a threat on us. So this is uh, some kind of issue that some researchers have uh, vigorously uh, researching on these things, then only we could be able to understand this. So mo how, uh, most of our uh, laptops or most of our uh, computers are uh, they, have, or they do have the Intel uh, Intel Pentium processor, Intel chips, what, uh, 
these things. So how we can trust these kinds of devices? Uh, previous uh, on previous slide, we could able to find out the chips that contains uh, uncomponent which are not intended, which, are, which is intentionally put to track us. And other thing that hackers can use is the voltages that respective to these particular uh, user to give particular uh, uh, for powering up these uh, particular chips can able us to uh, exploit our secrets also. So this is literally a lot of ways we we are under threat. And and one other ten things. This was in 2070. So see this. Maybe many of us have HP laptops. So they intentionally admit that they have installed keylogger on their varieties of laptops. So how how it is to be effective? As so whatever we typed on the laptop, it might have our username, it might have our secrets, it might have our passwords, it might have our messages. Those are all logged. And these logged are sent in to this particular company. So the company ha do have your, your details, your passwords, everything, do, whatever you have typed on this particular. We don't know uh, certain models are there, certain models of HP models are there. These are intentionally created somehow. Some um, researchers found that then only they would admit it. Otherwise, they will continue the installation of these things in their laptops and nobody we don't nobody will have an idea how security we how secure we are and um, yeah so uh, now it's only hp we do have many brands of laptops that we have used we don't know somehow it has hacked we don't know somehow our logs are or logged or not that's it and another thing that we uh, on this day on uh, on most of these Times we do use is our, you know, uh, uh, pointless and card and contactless cards and cards. This can also be tracked. This can also be hacked. Uh, so these things is uh, this based on electronics. They do have some kind of a lot of ways to get into hack it out. So the threats, see the threats level that we have seen uh, as far as here. We do have the threats in our personal devices, mobile phones, laptops, maybe uh, inside our mobile phones or laptops related to the chips, related to the processors they are using and other things, uh, thing we are, the daily life we have used our uh, cash, online cash payment or this kinds of cash payment, uh, contactless cash payments. So these are under, under threats. So a uh, threat might found anywhere uh, if they're using these campaigns using any kind of um, new technologies. So one thing I have noticed that many of we were uh, as as AI or any kind of new NLPs or some kind of new technologies that come. Many of the toys are to toys that we might have used the cars or robot toys is that we are that are in the market. They do uh, they talk like human. They talk like you know. They have some conversation. They do have a conversation like Siri. So these kind of new advanced toys have come into the market. They might have the cameras. They might have, um, uh, they might have the uh, voice recognition systems. They might. So these things, these things really, uh, tap our voices. They listen up every time. They might surveillances. So see how uh, how things are changed into you know. And these companies would say that they use these techniques to enrich their technology with more accurate. We all know that using ML or machine learnings, we do require more data to precise our data, our organization systems. But in fact, does it have any security point of view? How we are given these devices, these toys, who authorized to give, who authorized to uh, to listen our voices. What if these devices uh, capture our private moments in our life? So how how trust we can uh, build on this while we buy a toys from a superstore? How how things could be 
you know how the threats are coming out there are, there are threats surface on these simple device also we never be thought of this device might have a security threat cyber security threat our our privacy threats on this on this particular little bit devices that is useful for our younger generations or the kids how they are useful for the kids uh, you know we never thought so but somehow the companies are doing it intentionally and you know uh, and some attackers some attackers from uh, any po and, and able to find out these issues they can able to you know they can able to exfiltrate these vulnerabilities into our personal lives this could be happens we know that internet that we have seen is not really the internet internet is one or two person of internet more than that is a deep web or dark web is there and another can another area the uh, the attackers of the researchers will find out that hackers can silently control your google home alexa siri with a laser light now it is every home every home uh, we usually uh, we probably would say about my, i do have uh, alexa uh, my home is controlled by google home and siri is one of uh, my personal assistant but somehow it it would not it also not listen up you uh, your voices but it can track you even at uh, researchers have discovered a clever technique to remote inject inaudible and in visible commands into a voice control devices by shining a laser at the target devices let me let me make an example of this if i have a device in my home somehow an attacker from 1 km or within 500 meters away from my home he can directly inject he can precisely inject uh, can a laser light it has a command it has in this it has an uh, a, this lesson they uh, so the commands that uh, a, like the remotely injectable commands so somehow uh, like uh, garage open open your garage so this might have open your car garages so these uh, the attackers can turn this command into an inaudible voices inaudible and invisible command uh, they can create this command this voice command into a laser light and this laser light has put into your uh, google home or any google alexa and this alexa uh, 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 could able to get uh, you know uh, they could understand the frequency range and somehow whatever the technology they might have used they can able to understand this is the legitimate uh, uh, command and they can uh, they can allow that open to get somehow an attacker can do that so this is was discovered by a team a cyber security researchers so these things uh, may have a potential uh, to getting to our home to getting to our uh, personal lives so the, a, little, a lot of a uh, lot of ways to attack out the so since we are be using all these kinds of information all these kinds of you know uh, devices so these things are very uh, very great um, potential to our privacy concerns and next we uh, nowadays everybody does have bluetooth speakers yeah it, it might uh, you know um everyday speakers can turns into acoustic cyber weapons um and that's uh, you know it's if it is controlled an attacker can able to emit uh, harmful sounds that are particular si uh, particular frequency sounds that is uh, hard harmful for the humans and attacker can able to somehow uh, infiltrate your uh, speakers and turn that speakers into acoustic cyber weapons so it doesn't mean no other missiles no other guns needed for to kill a uh, to kill a person or uh, or to infiltrate a person these things could be happen so this is just finding out it there are a lot of things that is not found out but there are some researchers that are interested in this kind of attacks they do research these things and they excavated these things and then only we could understand this kind of things this kind of threats that we can see in our daily lives 
And another area I do want to more emphasize on the medical devices. So since this is some kind of a pacemaker, it's electronic devices, it works somehow with some frequency range. Uh, it connect back to then only it uh, it would help to rhythmic proper rhythmic of our heart or some kind. Uh, so uh, so if a person has this kind of uh, is they using this kind of pacemakers or medical devices in building their bodies and uh, an attacker can able to infiltrate him by using a certain kind of frequencies that has a terrible impact on these kinds of devices. So there are a lot of way, there are a lot of ways we can exfiltrate these kinds of devices. And we do know that uh, our, our hospital beds nowadays is all modernized and all connected with different kinds of uh, electronics uh, and they do have connecting to the internet or to the other, to the they do they do capture our everyday life uh, to the capture of our medical records uh, medical issues and they transfer uh, to the uh, either the physicians mobile phones uh, like like uh, an advanced technologies are there in the operation theater and everything so that a robot uh, surgeries are done by robots if it is connected somehow connected to internet um, by means might have it has an uh, so these these kinds of uh, devices might have an authority from a surgeon or somehow an attacker can able to uh, hack into a surgeon accounts or a physician's uh, account or somehow he can able to control the devices. There's a lot of issues are there regarding this uh, thing also. So uh, I wish uh, so another area I would love to uh, give you about the SIM cards, how the our SIM cards, it's not our mobile phones, how our SIM cards uh, are vulnerable to remote SIM jack attacks. So this is kind of vulnerability that could, uh, uh, and honestly, uh, our country is not in this attack area. Some countries, is, they do use these kinds of SIM card technologies. They do have some kind of, so what uh, I, would, I would describe how these attacks have happened. You will get a common message, a little bit, uh, a little bit uh, small message from the SIM provider. Maybe an attacker send you some comments that comments can understand only by the SIM. So after a free fire arm attacker, somehow I can send you a symbol command in, as a message into your phone. I can control, I can take a control of your phone using this vulnerability. And, you know, and we do have Chinese hackers compromise our telecom servers to spy on SMS messages. And moreover that we do have a lot of problems uh, in uh, most of the Chinese phones are used by Indians. We do have a lot of branches like Vivo, like Xiaomi. So we don't know what kind of attack threats they have put into that phones. So uh, our, uh, I think one or two months before, uh, a, provi a good provider, I think Vivo, I don't know exact company names, is they exposed the user details around two or three million user details, in the user details. Is exposed, uh, somehow an attacker exposed user details, sensitive details uh, these phone does have, phone uh, providers does have. So actually we don't know how they are good in hackers, you know, they could able to infiltrate, they are the creators of the uh, servers. Is somehow I have, uh, uh, in one of the last slide, I pointed out it, some hardware injections that had to happen. Somehow say they have injected this hardware and they can able to, we don't know our phones are injected, is any kind of trackable things are there, is any kind of, and these, these especially these phones what I have seen, they do have a custom application. They have a custom, lot of custom application. We don't know. It cannot be deleted, I think. Uh, I'm not using any kind of this phone. So uh, deleted, uh, but these custom apps, we don't know the survey, uh, from permissions of these custom apps and uh, how this custom, uh, whether we these custom apps uh, are, uh, spying on us or not. And uh, uh, maybe you may have heard about of Snowden. So uh, he discloses the NSA 
or the government of um, uh, American government says spying on their person, their citizens. So he was also from the uh, a government official and one of one of the interview with Guardian. So Guardian has, I think, uh, uh, introduced uh, his uh, disclosing issues. And uh, one of the interview he made uh, when the Guardian people approached him, he said, he uh, says to the Guardian people, please do kept your phones in the fridge. So he kept all the uh, phones from the Guardian people in the in his apartment fridge refrigerator why he feared out even even the phone is switched off even the phone is switched off may they have ability to uh, may, may and I say have the ability to uh, tap the calls and tap where this person is located he can find out the government can find out and infiltrate him so he somehow designs uh, so uh, to neglect these radio signals. So even we do have to know that I think, uh, uh, I don't know exactly how the great information, but I would say that even our phones are turned uh, switched off, but the radio signals, uh, the phone will co uh, uh, connect to our radio signal uh, to the networks near network cap, uh, networks near to us. So it, uh, it would, uh, it do not stop the connecting. It will, so in that way, a person, a attacker or any government person can surveillance where this person does have. So I don't know uh, the authenticity of this, but uh, I would strongly agree uh, that nowadays is anything would happen. So somehow he designs a particular kind of uh, devices that uh, has neglecting the radios uh, signals to capture him, to capture his locations. And so this is one of the kind of attacks that could happen in the 4G LTE networks. Uh, hackers can spy, tracks, foof, spam. So this is great. The, uh, this is kind of thing. It is, it's a complex, but many of may, uh, and it is happened and our 4G networks can be hacked LT network can be hacked from the SS, SS7 protocols. They do, uh, in case of telecom networks, they do have a lot of information, a lot of guys who are researching on it. We do have uh, great researchers from India also. They do have more researching on these things. But one thing I'm not sure, these things can be hackable. Uh, and if any attackers have the pointing out, they can spy on us, they can track on us, they can spoof on us, they can spam on us. And one of the serious things I do want to know, so in MLB thought of how, how well, if these kinds of devices, if these kinds of, we may have seen that Tesla can be hackable, cars can be hackable. Yeah, that's authentic, that's authenticity. How things, these predators can be hackable. What if somehow uh, we do have a lot of, uh, aircraft, so somehow we do have fighter jets, how in a combat times is having a combat times is somehow in some countries is the enemy country can be able to hack into it in a, uh, this kind of fighter jets. It turned them to a weapon against themselves, right? So these, these are serious vulnerabilities. So now it is, uh, recently I have found out the DARPA, uh, those who develop some kind of like DRDO in India, uh, from USA, DARPA also developing uh, some kind of tool, some kind of weapons for their mass destructions. They do also uh, disclose their bug bounty programs on their hardware uses. So they figure it out, everybody, because uh, in, uh, in us, in the, Many of the researchers, the prominent researchers are the, they might not want into get work into a company, but they are more interesting to the bug hunting and these, these kinds of defensive areas. They would give out the million amount of dollars to them if they found out some critical issues. So this is some kind of critical issues. Somewhere they have found out on a 15 fighter jets. I don't know how many, how many, uh, what if in the case of our, our aircrafts, our flight, fighter jets happens and it would impact badly on us so the threats 
are not limited to any areas. The threats are leveraging whenever new technology, new area comes into the picture. So this was around an old thing, um, a decade old, the uh, National uh, Americas NSA have strategic partnership with IT major global corporation, uh, you know, who they, you, you may have think about HP, that we we were saying that they were uh, they were using uh, this kind of keyloggers in their laptops. And now you got the point. Who you can, who behind these kinds of things? Microsoft, Intel, Verizon, IBM, Qualcomm. Do I do? Did I mention you the Qualcomm chipses before? So NSA do have some kind of partnerships to exfiltrate not only uh, the people. Everybody does have, and uh, just for a moment, just for one minute, please. Okay, um, so these are the NSA strategic partnerships with uh, different kinds of hardware platforms, operating systems, uh, application software, security hardware. They do have partnerships, and you know. They can infiltrate our data, not only the USA personal data, everybody data who uses these kinds of information. And I do want to give you some information about uh, the great hack. Maybe many of you might have seen this Netflix series. I somehow has interested in it because this is related to the privacy, uh, but the least concern that we Indians are care about it. That is the privacy, our own privacy. We don't have any kind of uh, privacy concerns, or you know, you know, uh, it's uh, the privacy, some kind of online privacy, some kind of uh, a legal issue in countries like uh, U.S. or European Union. But we don't have that kind of issues here. So, and first, uh, did you think about it? Uh, many of our many of our apps or whatever the how they want whatever the services that they're pointing out but somehow they are keeping our data and then took control to us so so the, i maybe many of you may have you know uh we be thinking out many of the ml programs or any software does have these machine learning capabilities is they would identify us our data our behavior our you know uh then they would take our controls so this does happen this really happens in the last uh you know uh, elections in usa so cambridge analytica a firm a firm uh, sparked the greatest privacy of us citizens around i don't know a, a lot of amount of around millions of their users uh users in facebook uh, this particular third-party tool enables us to, you know, uh, able to identify uh, every U.S. citizens' their data. They do have, you know, they this this particular tool in uh, Cambridge Analytica's tool can able us to capture around 500, 5,000 data set or data points for a single person. For a single U.S. citizen, they could capture about it. Maybe it just contains uh, his likes, his interest, his way of life. What I don't know how uh, how how many data they could be able to maybe able to you can count it up from five thousand data. So it's, uh, it's a complete picture of a person, and you know, so identify his political view, and uh, and and reporting him into the news uh, the threats that does happen in the uh, that does happens to change his political behavior you know because uh, at that time uh, at the time of election these guys might have think about okay whatever i have followed they might have some problems now these times so they don't have major really problem but the problem is on the social network these uh, these companies have put effort to change the mindset uh, of the people. So whatever we are talking, whatever we are, you know, uh, our complete nowadays our complete life is on the internet. So everybody could understand this what a person really through the internet. 
So, and, uh, and companies is, uh, nowadays is they're focusing uh, and they're focusing on ads, uh, advertising with the needs of the youth or, you know, they could use anything. So, but this, this happens, this campaign just happens for, uh, for, uh, for, you know, for getting a rule of a government to of a country, of a country which has the highest democratic values. So this is very serious issues. Because they didn't, uh, they didn't hack, uh, they didn't hack down. They just pointed out, uh, they just captured our data. So it's, it's illegal, uh, and it's illegal that us and uh, uh, they use these data to change our behavior, to change our mind, and they control our mind to what we have to do. So these things has happened nowadays, is everywhere. So it's not one Cambridge Analytica. It's a lot of other firms are doing it. A lot of companies are doing it in respect of their own. We don't know. Uh, so I was giving a hint on this thing because we have a privacy awakening. We should have a privacy awakening at this stage also. So nowadays uh, we are on the verge of a epidemic. We are in the, uh, we are in a, uh, currently on an epidemic situation and everything, whatever our life is mainly depend upon the internet through uh, our education, our trade, our business is value into this internet, but we should have system more care about our privacy should not be uh, compromised. So uh, I just made a great, uh, it's not that much great, but we do have some kind of uh how could this happens in india also so maybe you maybe you guys may familiar with this uh person f society would be called this elliot anderson he's a french researcher he usually you know he usually reports some bugs in our uh, government application so so this was a uh, uh this was a detail of some of the uh findings as he has made on mr applications so if you're able to find out, uh, you can see here, you could able to find out um, the database password somehow. So this app just might have, uh, you know, uh, they might have contains any sensitive data assets, but what, what is, what is he was trying to do uh, because of his uh, involvement in these kinds of hacking, in these kinds of exposing the issues on our government apps the government has taken some more strict on nowadays the more strict on these kinds of developing or these kinds of security so this will be helping us how to so somehow this person has exposed this thing to the government some if somebody is not exposing these data how how could he come so uh, like what i mentioned in the first time like uh, the uh, the digital locker issue similarly this uh, like a mother the digital locker has some issues of it does have a 3.5 billion documents and, uh, and, and any attacker can able to access that it okay uh, so uh, the government has taken care of these things so nowadays they should they should have to protect uh, the privacy issues they are enforcing those strict and uh, enforcing areas in these kinds of privacy matters on us so uh, so what I'm trying to do, see the threats, this happens in front of our eyes and in, in front of our fingertips, in our, in our mobile phones, uh, you know, in our personal lives, in our uh, privacy matters. So uh, I would, uh, so in order to do that, in order to, uh, uh, so this is the threats that I want us to clearly give an idea about uh, the variety of threats that I have shared here from your hardware devices, from your input devices, from the medical data assets, to your, to your privacy, to personal data assets. Everything is under, can be hackable and under a great security threat. And, you know, so I, I'll do uh, enforce you I do enforce you guys is, should have this to be a uh, learn all these techniques, all these methodologies, defensive methodologies, is, and create your own communities is, in your college. So you can uh, you can participate, or the minded people might have part 
participate in kinds of these uh, this is some of the community that I have encountered. Team Bios is one of the greatest community. So they are they are the students is from Amrita University, Kerala. They do have multiple uh, title in the city of in the international city of competitions competitions. So and you can go through the talks, conferences, and all these we have discussed before uh, the last time. I uh, I just only mention you to go through all these things is, and you should have to be a great, uh, at least a learn, uh, learning experiences over, uh, over uh, the privacy issues and you should have to create your own uh, a security habit, you know, uh, not giving you, a, you know, to be under any kind of spear phishing attacks. Uh, you should have to be more care on any kind of exposing your sensitive data in the internet so these things you should have to be, uh, you should enforce the communities and uh, you should enforce these kinds of information to your, uh, uh, to, into your life also, into others' life also. Uh, that's all what I have thinking. Thank you all. If you have any questions, we can sort it out now. Sir, uh, stop sharing your screen. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Asunul, for very nice session. A very wonderful session it is. And uh, uh, your session transformed the presentation from simple lecture into layer learning experience. So it was really enlightening us. Uh, you have rightly mentioned uh, that how carefully we should use our social networking accounts and uh, our electronic devices that are very essential part of our day-to-day -day life. And uh, new things we learn about our day-to-day uh, -day life that we are using from your lecture today, that is uh, how un unnecessary electronic devices injected on the motherboards of our machines and it is really a threat for us so there are number of plenty of uh, participants uh, are interested to ask questions if you allow me to ask uh, some of few questions yeah go ahead go ahead yes uh, so one of the participants would like to ask question uh, he's mr uh, Saurabh Patil from London. Okay, so uh, uh, over to Saurabh Patil. Hello. Hello. Hi, Saurabh. Hello, Mr. Hasanel. Yes. It was nice to have an informative session from you. Yeah. It helped us a lot uh, for understanding uh, the things about the cyber security. Okay. And I have a question that uh, how do we stay current on the cyber uh, threat landscape? Uh, can you repeat the question one more? Uh, how do we stay current on the cyber threat landscape? How do we stay current uh, cyber security uh, threats landscapes? Yes. Sir. Okay. So, so for my understandings, so we don't have really, a, uh, we don't know really where the threats will be there. So we uh, so throughout my session, you could be able to see that uh, uh, any devices, any electronic devices that we will be using, you know, for a personal or a, uh, for our home usages, uh, these kinds of devices can be and hackers can be used to get uh, get into our, our personal lives or any kind of issues, and it would come from uh, what would I say from a uh, like. Uh, consumer in uh, area, consumer areas is, and uh, into the uh, large industrial scapes like uh, critical infrastructure areas is, and 
uh, and our social network areas is, and uh, and moreover uh, a personal knowledge means uh, the social engineering aspects so uh, what i have seen the trend uh, many many of the large or many of the large data breaches or any kind of uh, you know we do have these critical infrastructures there there are uh, you know uh, there are air gap systems we can't directly inject any malware or any kind of from an internet we can't directly get into that thing so it does require a third person a person involvement maybe a poor fellow from you know administrative he doesn't have any uh, knowledgeable or uh, any training knowledgeable in the cyber security that he has to put link he has to click on that particular link he doesn't have to differentiate whether these links he had got in his emails have a va valid or a scam links so what i am what i'm trying to say is uh, mainly uh, a knowledge in a person at least a cyber security uh, knowledge in a person at least threat knowledge whatever you mentioned the threat basically i would suggest that it has to an impact first impact so we 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 should have an uh, you know uh, security uh, habit we should have to take care in our daily lives so then only we can uh, defend the threats that coming in future Okay. okay so as per you said uh, before you uh, the in uh, today's life the mobile phones which we use can be hacked and things uh, can be hacked from laptop and things so uh, this there's there are a lot of people who use mobile phones and they don't have complete idea about cyber security or internet if some message pops up like just for okay they just randomly click okay and which can cause them hack so how can we prevent that thing yeah <laughs> okay that's a great question so uh you know day by day a new techniques are evolving so if if i found out you know uh, as somehow researcher found out so these issues uh, and uh, and the attack uh, and the companies like uh, what i'm trying to say so if if a whatsapp app uh, most of the most of our we are using out so if uh any kind of vulnerabilities are coming out so these companies are enforcing these companies are enforcing uh mitigations whenever a researcher found out these issues so uh as a uh, at least no uh you know get knowledge on regarding this the week we should not say that we have to completely avoid the phones because it's uh, as it's daily it's a it's kind of a daily habit in our daily life so uh we should have to care a little bit you know uh, at get an get at least a common sense knowledge in these areas so what it, what it is really so i do have seen many of these issues uh, people uh, you know they don't have any background great background in, in security they might get calls from the people would say ask their otp or any kind of fish any these should have just be neglected so uh, and our from any calls from banks or related stuff uh this would have to be they might have to t take care of these things if any suspicious activity if they they found out they can directly go to the nearby uh um like cyber police so the they can directly contact them they could get help from them also one more thing uh you are aware about the black hole attack black right? hole attack yeah okay it's a black hole internet attack basically it's a loss of data so if such kind of attack is been performed on the system what can we do like what what is the step to be taken in such situation mm, it's regard uh, it's regarding the forensics of uh, applic where our data are gone like this you had mentioned yeah, yeah exactly Or, it's, uh, like they are that uh, it's just like a black hole uh, of the earth uh, the data is gone it's been missing from the system like it's been sent from the sender but it's not received to the receiver and and it's not in the line it's just missing it somewhere as an attack uh, as a victim uh, you know what i am seen is uh, most of the cases is uh, like uh, similar like ransomware attacks the person's data get encrypted by an attacker and he has to give the ransom amount to the attacker in order to 
get the data backs exactly so otherwise is you know in that areas is you know if a personal device is there if it doesn't uh, you know it, uh, it it doesn't make much impact but see some kind of if a company that a company is uh, you know if a company documents or company a particular organization or a particular certain organization documents get these kinds of ransomware their device ransomware they have to pay a lot so mm -hmm. because uh, there is no backup for that one you know so so in such situation what can be uh, precaution that we can take uh, being uh, if you are in a big company what precaution can you take it uh, so in a big company since we do have a for, uh, forensic people and uh, these kinds of people they do have better knowledge how we can retrieve those data and uh, and aware of that uh, every company every organization for this kind of uh, work they do have uh, create a multiple backups in order to mitigate these kind of issues so they might have felt some kind of they would be uh, foreseen these kinds of issues so you know they uh, uh, they they would only want us to you know uh, in uh, more of their data is are nowadays is a uh, in the cloud so uh, they do have uh, they do have given a protection on these things so and companies should have us to give a basic a uh, training to the all the employees is they uh, so regarding the issues nowadays is every company is has doing the training regarding the spear phishing attacks this is the common attacks is everybody does do so uh, nowadays every company does have their, their own inline uh, spear phishing attacks uh, and uh, spear phishing trainings is given up for the uh, trainers so that's the best issues and uh, in order to get the data backups is, you know uh, you should have to do me more care on um backups were there you know an organization should be backups were there but you know encryption once it is encrypted it's hard to decrypt it uh, okay. uh, thank you husnul uh, for answering the questions while giving uh, various example uh saurav i hope uh, your questions are answered and anticipated well yeah thank you very much uh, 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 husnul uh, i will ask three more questions to you uh, can i yeah sure yeah a very vital question uh, probably every participant uh, is waiting for answer of this question the question is uh, government suggests us to keep all our educational documents in digi locker but you said that there is threat to digi locker how secure are our documents there uh, you know so if some kind of research some kind of uh, ethical hacker has found out these kinds of issue so the uh, i think the cert in uh, cert in the cert in is a organization who take care of all these kinds of issues is. so they acknowledge the issues is. so uh, they would say about uh, they are currently uh, they are mitigated these issues is. so uh, for you know i, I won't suggest in, uh, you know uh, i don't have a much explanation what we can do on these things but uh, one thing uh, one thing i could say to the uh, you know uh, to that government should uh, you know uh, should have us to give an opportunity for ethical hackers uh, to finding out the issue related with the government services so they could find out uh, uh, issues and government can also mitigate these issues before uh, before uh, before these applications are coming into the picture or before these coming applications are in the production or either they can now uh, now uh, even the government's uh, arugya sedu app does have they created a bug bounty program says so hackers from all over the world can participate in that and they can find out the issues and they can uh, report that issues to the government and the government mitigated these issues so these things is we can mitigate it yes <clears throat> thank you uh another inter interesting questions uh, for you uh, that is from pranav menan a uh, question is what kind of precautions and actions can be taken against the cyber criminals cyber criminals yeah what kind of precautions and actions can be taken against the cyber criminals so first one if you found out any suspicious activity if you found out suspicious activity you know on your uh, device on your premises any kind of so you should have this to so uh, you should have this to you know uh, go to the cyber police 
if they do and if, uh, you should have to report these cases to the cyber police first and you should have to get an uh, get a basic understandings how these attacks comes on like uh, like we do uh, i usually have found out some uh, we got some false calls from uh, for different numbers I know numbers and they would say, this is our account number. You should have this to uh, please do give our ATM informations or ATM card number or OTP that may have sent to you. So uh, a, a bank never ever ask your uh, credentials or your uh, ATM num uh, pin card number or OTP number or even the CVV number. They will never ask about these things. So first get knowledge. If anyone asks for these things, you should have to notify this to the cyber criminal police or there. Yes. Uh, so another question from uh, Atharva Khadse. The question is, which is the best language used for ethical hacking? Uh, there is no language for ethical hacking at all. So uh if you know some kind of you know this is uh this is a great question so many of we think about does it require any kind of languages does it does it require any kind of scripting so i would say that it doesn't require anything but if you do have if you do have a uh, if you do have a uh, at least a knowledgeable in you know uh some kind of uh languages it would be very useful so I would say, but when you have, you know, uh, when a person getting to the area of penetration testing, he might have encounter with web application and mobile application. There we can see that uh, HTML, we could able uh, different kinds of libraries, Java scripts or Java. So if, if that person has an idea about these kinds of languages, he can perform well. That's it. Yes. Uh, one question. Uh... Oh, one, uh, this is my question. So how the general user come to know that uh, the hardware uh, is injected, it is unwanted in his motherboard or uh, anywhere in his uh, electronic device? You should have such to break the hardware and look over it. <laughs> That's the only way. That's only the way the researchers have found it. Yes. Because somehow, somehow these uh, super micro computer, super micro servers, uh, they were suspicious because of some 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 connection this happened. Some con uh, some connection to the uh, Chinese servers. They have found out some data. They found out that internal team found out some data. Uh, they they don't know what is it is where this data comes out. How this data is push pushing out. So the team, the testing, I don't know, they might hire the researchers or they might hire uh, hire the professionals to do the test. So somehow this person does know, some of these researchers know uh, uncommon component in the board. Yeah. Okay, we, uh, we, uh, we do know that in every circuit board or PC board, we uh, minimize the PC board at most, right? Mm -hmm. To the uh, to make it as a uh, you know comfortable so uh, somehow they didn't understand uh, this particular component and what is usage and they trace out their PCB then they found out that this is unwanted in this particular component and they use it uh, they find out this is the issue they uh, the creators have cre uh, put it uh, intentionally yes uh... So uh, this is all about the questions. I really appreciate you for taking the time to answering all the questions in very well manner. Uh, now I request Professor Ankush Utke for vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Sunil Wankar, sir. I'm honored and lucky to have the opportunity to give you the vote of thanks. On behalf of MCT's Rajiv Gandhi Institute of Technology, I would like to thank our today's eminent speaker, Mr. Sunil Sanu. Thank you, sir, for giving excellent coverage to cybersecurity and the opportunities in this domain in the morning session and the cybersecurity threats in this session. It was really the informative session. I'm sure your knowledge gaining session will surely help all the participants in the coming days. Thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and giving us your valuable time. I would also like to thank all the participants for attending a session in such a great number. Thank you. Thank you all.
I request all participants to fill the feedback form shared on the Telegram group. Dear par participants, before ending the day one, I would like to announce that tomorrow's session will be conducted by Mr. Soumil Kandadia, cyber security analyst at Ridgeback Network Defense. His session is on cyber security in the current world with respect to the framework based on NIST and cyber kill chain. So see you all tomorrow at 10 a.m. Till then, goodbye. Take care. Thank you, Sunil. Thank you very much. Thank you, team. Yes. Thank you for this opportunity. Yes. Thank you. Bye. I request host to end the meeting.